Hello, this is Sam, and welcome to Unit 8 of LTC 8875. It's hard to believe, but this is the final unit of the course. So what we're going to do in this video is look back at Unit 7, where we were dealing with flipped instruction, and that continues to be something that I personally am interested in, and I'm going to be continuing to research. And so by the way, if you're going to be doing some flipped instruction and you don't mind talking about your experience, or if you're in the area, maybe even being observed in your experience doing flipped, uh, let me know because Zandra Dearajo and I are still studying that and hope to study it more in the future. But in this video, we'll look back at some of our discussion in the class about flipped instruction, and then I'll give a quick preview to the two things that are going to make up Unit 8 and finish off the course for us. So there was a lot of good discussion about flipped instruction in Unit 7, a lot of it happening around the voice thread, but also some uh, discussion of videos that might be used for flipped instruction. We wanted to react to just a couple of the ideas that came up. So people agree generally that flipped instruction is very often lecture based. It's lecture videos that are used in flipped instruction. But there was a positive response from a lot of people to this idea in the voice thread about setup or, uh, or motivation videos and then having those kinds of videos being followed by collaboration and discussion in the classroom. Uh, so that version of flipped instruction got a positive response. For example, Monique and Sarah said that this type of flipped instruction resonated more with what they want their students to experience in mathematics classes. Um, but Emily asked a question about when does the formalization of content happen? That's a good question. If the, pro if the problems are launched at home, and then if there's collaborative work and investigation during class, then I would say it's difficult to do well, but I think the formalization and summary of the big mathematical ideas would need to happen in whole class discussions. So they're sharing out their work after they've worked collaboratively or in groups or something like that. Um, so I think that the formalization does need to happen, but it could happen in class as a discussion. Uh, another possibility that one flip teacher in our study did use was having a lecture video for the end of the lesson, like a take home homework assignment, rather than a video at the beginning of the lesson. So that way he could have the students, this teacher from our study, he had students do a group investigation in class and then they could see the ideas wrapped up and formalized if they needed uh, afterward. They could watch the video after the investigation. This flexibility with flipped instruction could also be a way of addressing Kristen's question about when to have procedural practice. You could do flipped instruction by having a setup video that launches a problem. Then you could do collaborative work in class to solve and discuss the problem. And then you could have some exercises after that for practice, procedural practice. So there's nothing that says if you use a setup video as flipped homework that that has to be the only kind of homework that you give. You could have exercises or you could have uh, lecture videos or summary videos afterward. There was a concern that was raised and talked about by a lot of people, which is what about students who don't do the homework? So for example, in flipped classes, what about students who don't watch the videos? That's a big question, big concern. Sammy made the point that those students may not progress through the problems in class because they didn't watch the video. And then if they don't make progress in class, they're now twice as behind. They're behind on the content presentation, also behind on the problems. Others may argue that students doing homework or not doing homework is an issue with any kind of instruction. It's not a unique issue to flipped instruction. So whether you're flipping or not flipping, you want to try to get your students to do the homework. Maybe it's easier to get them to watch a video than to complete a bunch of problems because you can't really get stuck watching a video. So the students might not comprehend everything from the video, but they can at least finish the assignment by watching the video. And this is essentially a point that Stephanie made on VoiceThread um, that, hey, at least students can watch the video without getting stuck and frustrated. And Emily said that her big task, if she was doing flipped instruction, would be to try to hold students accountable for watching the videos. So some ways you can try to hold them accountable is you could embed questions in the video. You could do video quizzes when they get back, just like completion kind of quizzes, like to ask them things if they did watch it or not. Um, you could hold them accountable to watching the videos by not reteaching the same things that are in the video. So you, if they ask you something that's directly in the video and it makes it obvious they didn't watch it, you could tell them, go ahead and watch it now, or go over to the side and watch it on your phone or something like that, if you're pretty sure that they didn't watch it. Because if they ask you for something that's clearly in the video and they didn't watch the video, if you reteach it, you're kind of letting them off the hook. Um, other things that you might do are something that I haven't even thought of yet. You might get creative and find some other way to hold students accountable to watching the videos. But nevertheless, it's definitely a concern that students might not watch the videos. 
just like not all students will do the problems that you assign for homework. So really the question becomes, which is more valuable? Getting told some mathematical ideas or explanations, or getting a chance to work on some math problems and talking about them with other people. Whichever one is the most important, then maybe that's the one you should have happen during class, because there's more of a guarantee of that one happening because you can be there to guide it as a teacher. So if you think getting the experience working on the problems and talking about it is the most important thing, then maybe you try to have that happen in class rather than sending it home as homework. Um, or if you think that the presentation of ideas to the students, if that's the most important, then maybe you don't send that home, maybe you do that in class to make sure that it happens. So that's just touching on a, a few of the ideas that came up related to flipped instruction. There was a lot of good conversation that happened in this unit. We we're very excited to see that. We want to end here with just uh, some concluding thoughts. So Nate had a nice summary statement about flipped instruction being innovative, where he said that flipped instruction is really only an effective alternative to non-flipped instruction if the flipped instruction is paired with high cognitive demand learning opportunities for the students. So Nate summarized this as, you know, some things that I had put forward in the VoiceThread presentation. And it is accurate that I put those ideas forward, but I just wanted to clarify here that we don't yet know empirically that that's where the benefit would come from flipped instruction, that it would come from having high cognitive demand tasks or discussions in class. But that is the hypothesis of myself and Dr. DeRajo after our pilot study. We hypothesized that learning gains will not come from the videos just by themselves, but the learning gains would come compared to non-flipped instruction if there was a rich use of class time when the teachers are flipping. We hope to check this hypothesis out empirically next year if we can receive more research funding. So that's a little bit of a look back at Unit 7. Looking ahead now to Unit 8, which kicks off today, there are really just two main tasks. You have your group lesson plan, where you have some technology incorporated into the lesson plan, and then you have a written reflection about the course and where your thoughts are currently about technology and mathematics education. So it's kind of uh, you know reflecting back to what we asked you to think about way back in Unit 1, about what your philosophy or what your opinion is on technology and math ed. Um, but first, so the group lesson plan, um, the lesson plan can be in any format that you want. There's no specific length, um, but just uh, include any key handouts or any key attachments so that we can see those. And then with your lesson plan, format it however you want, but we're just going to be looking for the three things that are described on Canvas in the assignment. Um, we, wanna, we want it to be clear what your actual plan for the lesson is, um, we, you know, clear what the students are doing, what you're doing as teacher, clear what the learning opportunities are. We want to see balance between procedural and conceptual understanding to the extent possible, um, balance between content and practices, and then we're going to be looking for the role of technology in your lesson. So, um, you know, it doesn't need to be the most technology flamboyant thing that's ever been created, but it does need to have a little bit of technology in there so that we can look at what role did the technology play. Is it supporting the mathematical ideas? Is it supporting students' mathematical investigations? Or is it just some surface decoration? We uh, also are planning to give each member of the group the same grade, so you'd be just graded as a group overall. But if an issue arises in terms of a group mate not carrying their weight, please let me know as soon as possible, as soon as it becomes a concern, and we will take appropriate measures if there is you know, somebody not really doing their part in the group. Let me know. Um, then there's the written reflection, which is just a short paper, a few pages about your current thoughts on technology mathematics education, what questions you have about it, and then if and how this course changed or influenced or clarified your thoughts about technology and math education. So that's an assignment as well. Um, all of that needs to be turned in by December 15th. That's the latest date possible so that we can get it graded and grades submitted to the university. If you want preliminary feedback on either of those assignments, we are happy to give preliminary feedback. Just get it to us by December 11th. All right, thanks and see you online.